early start on Sunday because I'm so far behind in catching some rooms I wanted to catch. Oh, look at this. I save, uh, did I save the best for last? Huh? You have to go through that turntable there. Okay, oh, wow. whole story with this. Hey, what's up, Michael? Hey, how are you Good to see you. How are you doing? Good to see you. You're a little more toned down than I am. Uh, yes. It's a travel day. It's a travel day. I knew it's weird to say that. Yeah. Oh, I forgot my little light. I need my little light, but anyway. We, we can't help you with our... Oh, you got a little light? Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, I want everybody to be able to see this. Yeah, so I just wanted to give you uh, one pointer here. The yeah. whole purpose of this rack here was to sort of show that if you invest in our loudspeaker, uh -huh. you don't need to spend an arm and a leg to maybe get a good source that would be reasonable to use with the, you know, the transducer is what's important. Sure. And you can sort of upgrade as you go over. So I brought this system here to sort of illustrate that whole. So this is like, a, this is 599, this adds another 300 to it. So this is a topping preamp. Yep, yep. Then I have an SM, SMSL yep. CD player, which is also a wireless Bluetooth uh, DAC. It uses the new AKM right. chipset. Then we have this um, DAC as well, which can, um, you know, is very, very good. You could use a computer and, you know, if you were like, needed to really go inexpensively, you have a volume control, you plug this into your computer and you could drive the LX521s just perfectly with that. Then I brought a beautiful turntable, which is... 1299 is... 1299. Is that one? And then we have this turntable here from Tryout Audio that also makes this beautiful stand, which is a, has some really sophisticated design capability and built into it so it's um there are two bamboo plants they're separated by zorbethane the two hearst motors are very uh you know upper echelon hearst motors which are used in bpis and so forth many 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 turntables they are acoustically isolated from the top plinth by not touching uh, you know they're not touching then there's this really interesting this is a copper plate with seven layers it's resin machine there's this really wonderful um under plinth or under platter i should say it's got basically um you know kilogram these are each like half a kilogram and they're very it's very heavy you know so this gives it that um centripetal or centripetal force then you have this very narrow low friction bearing that is driven by these two pulleys so forth and then you have a bamboo tone arm which is 12 inch and this whole system, the turntable is uh, uh, approximating $4,000. This might be another $1,000. You can get a nine-inch really? one. So for a low $5,000 price, $5, total for yeah, this? Yeah, so look, and look at how it... And uh, includes that in, uh, includes, platter. Yeah, exactly. Includes everything. Tone arm, just add, add the cartridge. You add the cartridge. And a phono stage. Yeah, and a phono stage. And I'm using a, a um, bugle phono stage from Jim Hagerman. Okay. So that's like a three hundred, you know, less than three hundred dollars. And I tell you, when you listen to this thing, you're gonna be like blown away. I mean, it doesn't compete particularly well with the Kuzma that I have over there, but it's fantastically good. You know, it's just amazingly good for what it is. And on aesthetics and, alone, it's, yeah, a, it's exactly. got the badass. Uh, it's very beautiful, <laughs> as you can see. Quotient so, is good <laughs> for five thousand dollars. It's hard to get sometimes with a turntable. Yeah, so yeah. So the whole idea here, though, was to you know we're selling loudspeakers, we're not selling turntables and whatnot. But I wanted to show to people that hey, with some intelligent thought, you could you know skimp on some things and actually still spend the money it. in the right spots is right. what I'm all about. Yeah. Exactly. So. so uh, yeah, this is what a smart audiophile system looks like when you're on a reasonable budget, which most people are. You know, invest in what matters the most, treat your room, get good speakers, and then eventually you can try different right, things. You could upgrade selectively. So, you know, yeah. I have an XP32 Pass Labs giant preamp that's fantastic, you know, and right. you do hear the difference, but it's grades of perfection. Yeah, much more. You're paying a lot for that minuscule percentage. Exactly. And these speakers are amplified. You know, they come with the potential to be exactly. active. So they're all integrated, uh, with, you know. I'll you like can use your own amps if you want, but yeah. Yeah. So this is a new, uh, what is this, acrylic? This is a special type of acrylic that we milled out of one 30 millimeter piece okay. down from both sides and uh, heavily 
polishing involved after that and tempering. So we have extremely dull material, acoustically dull material. Interesting. And uh, due to special tempering processes with heating it up and so on and so on, lead to they take all the tension out of the material okay. and make it super silent. I'm going to put on my light here for you so people can see. That make it super silent uh, material, which is a good match for the 521. And so the idea was now we have a, a, a speaker that's not only acoustically transparent, but also visually. Yes, <laughs> and that's uh, cool because some people will like this vibe. <laughs> look look at the shadow. Yeah, you the see I'm creating a cool <laughs> shadow in the back. Yeah, and uh, the ideas of having like floating four black circles, one on top yes. of each other. And when you're sitting here, you can look through them, basically. Yeah, it's really a cool vibe. So, yeah. And then eventually you can do acrylic everything. I mean, yes, just a totally yes. naked speaker. Yes. Yes. Yeah, not, not the, the, the bass bar. Yeah, the probably pin, not. Probably not, but because it's mechanically very much stressed. Right. But the rest of it is... Uh, is Interesting. In making. Cool. Um, a, what's yeah. a, is this a new? What's this driver up here? It's the same driver. Okay. It, it's just uh, the shadow of the driver, so to speak. We oh. we blackened it, so we don't see the silver in here. We want okay. To have so a the rear surface. firing. Okay. The rear firing is still there. Okay. But and, yeah, uh, so you back it here for yeah. the front firing one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just uh, for optical reasons we yeah. made it. Gotcha. Four black circles on top of each other. Right, because you don't have the normal baffle. Yeah. Cool. And then these are your other options. Yeah, this uh, that one we had last year. Even yes. this was the Panzer full Panzer, Panzer holes with the deck, and this is the new one. This is the Panzer holes uh, aluminium sandwich, which has a. a Aluminium five millimeter, and then the Panzer holes core, and another aluminium five millimeter, with the added sub baffles on that, okay. and with the new, more narrow stand on it, which also eases the return of the rear wave towards the front, the interaction of the of the driver. Yeah, for people that haven't <coughs> seen my videos, I'm a big fan of Panzerholz. This is almost like bulletproof material. Yeah. It's used on the yeah. base of Panzerholz tanks, I think. You know, that's yeah, right. it's a, in, in, in Formula in, One cars. Yeah. Yeah. In Formula in, One cars, they, they still the use it. Yeah. And they yeah. also, uh, you know, they have it. Uh, it is ballistic wood. It's designed to stop a 50 caliber bullet. You know, yeah. so they put it into like uh, some yeah. of our armored uh, transport. When, when you have a bullet into it, it's like it stuck in like in honey. Yeah, it gets stuck right in there. <laughs> so, what do you, also for just long lasting versus MDF and other materials yeah, that may we don't warp use, over time. We do mostly HDF. HDF. Which is, okay. Which is, uh, so yeah, there's some advantages just from longevity and, and, and strength, but also resonant properties I've been a big fan of. Uh, but this is really cool too. And what do you got here? Is this a tape deck you've been running? Um, this is the tape deck uh, from Analog Audio. Oh Design yeah, this is the in, new one, huh? Uh, the new one, like yes, with 27 the grand. And, uh, 27 grand. And my friend Doug was very interested in buying this. Yes, and uh, the guys will come over hopefully today and yes. operate it. Okay. And if you feed them directly to our power boxes, it's an awesome sound. That's cool. Yeah, this is good to see. Yeah, that's a new tape with samples from Yellow. And I hope we can hear it today. We heard it okay. on the first day when building or when... when yeah, I'll come back up. for music clips later and we can play this, yeah. We have to we have to check out with the guys. Yeah, okay. To, to but I've, I've featured that t deck now at two different shows, Tampa and Dallas. Yeah. Very impressive, so yeah. Yeah, we'll be in Munich too. Working I'll be together in Munich, okay. With, with them. You will okay, be yeah, I'm in Munich, yeah. We, we will be across the, sec the street. The second show across the street. No, okay. no not, not the... Um, the Hi-Fi Deluxe, they uh, are like 10 minutes away. Okay. We are just across the street. Oh, near the restaurants in that? And the Model World. Yeah, okay, Model where World. They yeah. have the nice cars. Where they have the restaurants and in there. We have rickshaw service. Oh, okay. They bring you over those uh, 200 meters. Okay, I'll be t definitely taking advantage of that. So. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Anything in this other room to see? Yeah, yeah we, the that's high end, uh, the high-end uh, source system. Oh, I'm over there. There's so oh. always something to see. Well, yeah, now I have to edit. <laughs> <laughs> Dave just ruined the video talking. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> walk you through the, Kuzma. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is the uh, Kuzma Stabi R, which is a very it's one of the best turntables manufactured today. You know, it uses the high mass type architecture, which is you know it's very heavy. And then today, we uh, Scott Markwell let us the um, uh, pl uh, Platus, which is this new isolation uh, system. And it really makes a very in impressive um, system together. You know, I brought t today this um, Stogie R uh, Ref 313, which is a gimbaled bearing with the VTA column that allows it's very easy to set up. This is like a beautiful arm to manipulate. I mean, it's very straightforward. The four points, sonically perhaps better by a certain margin, but I was worried about the time that I had to set it up. And so I brought this one deliberately because it's very, very straightforward to set up. And um, uh, one of the nice advantages was neutrally balanced, you know. So this is another, um, I think it's a 12-inch it's a, a, a arm or 11-inch arm. can't remember exactly which one. But um, really, and I brought today a, a, a I'm using one, the kind of mid-level Audio-Technica moving coil. This is a $2,500 cartridge, uh, Art 20. Really nice sounding cartridges. Cartridges are delimited by the arm. Hey, Not, uh, you know, just wrap it. So then we move over here to our uh, Roland uh, okay. preamplifier here. Let me get a little so, light and then I have a Moon CD. I have a, a you know, relatively nice DAC. Then we have this beautiful modified LIN, which is. It's an Acuras Type yeah. 3, which yeah. comes with an external uh, SuperCap PS. Yeah, and so he has okay, his, yeah. his power supply down here, which was heavily modified as well. Let me have a little local area network, a wireless network, right. and then this is the NAS. This is the disk right. array that is mounted by this system to p play all the different, you know, high, um, Hard media. high, high, high di digital or quality files and so forth. Okay. And I'm playing CDs. And this okay. is the the Bernstein. You know, yeah. got the whole Leonard Bernstein yeah, edition there. There's <laughs> like, you can tell the pedigree of some of these. Uh, yeah, they're very very nice CDs. You know, yeah. and so I mean. We've been having fun with it and just playing um, CDs, yeah. which sound fantastic. I and think then, I just um, saw Taylor Swift. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then uh, over here, of course, the LX five two ones. This is done in the uh, this is the plywood base, uh -huh. then beautifully finished in walnut. And you can see that the level of finish, you know, how the Germans when they do their, uh, you know, they're kind of perfectionist oriented, and they do just beautiful work all the way through. So you can see that it's just like, for example, the interior of the, this is also, you know, uh, veneered and so forth. So they did left no, nothing unturned, you, you know. You don't see any wires in an open baffle is very rare. They right. run the wires into the cabinet and even only at the very bottom. Yeah. And even there, you know, you're using the uh, speak-ons speak and it's so you don't have a mess <laughs> uh, at all. Nothing to trip over, at least relatively. No, exactly. Notice the size. They're yes. very, very short. They're like right. one, one meter long. You don't have to feet. worry about shorting your amp. You know, one t terminal comes out. No. And that's, then, you know, that's, that's, what that's we a big show. Yeah. If you once uh, set up a system and you just uh, inverted one cable. One is cable. It's yeah. It's not right. Yeah, what amazing. is it? Yes. You yes. Trying to troubleshoot. Right. <laughs> or you wire your stuff out of phase. Yeah. You put the red yeah, with the so yes. This is and bulletproof. Black. You can't get it wrong because the receptacles will not yeah. allow you to, to you know, they're just their size. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you will yeah. no. basically understand it. Um, yeah. It's so, a, this is a smart system, but also one that gives state-of-the-art performance and reference level. Exactly. Yeah. One of my favorite open baffles. So I'll definitely, I'll, I wanna start, lit, I'm gonna put music clips in a separate one, but I'm glad you gave me this walkthrough so we can. Yeah. The, the, the thing is, you missed yesterday, you missed, uh -huh. uh, or even on Friday, you missed nice talks. Doug Fern doing single oh, Doug, okay. mic recordings. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, about his techniques and uh, yesterday, we started with Kevin Gray, the master of mastering, doing all those Blue Note reissues. Uh, oh, okay, cool. The room was crowded. Really? Day after uh, Jamie Howard okay. came in doing the planching processes, we take A, Bs before and after the de of the magnetic master tapes. Okay. 
uh, when he does the digital tr transfers. And then we had Evo Sound coming in with Chris Konecker. Wow, okay. Uh, and uh, presenting the new Yamamoto Trio CD. Okay. And yeah, that's unfortunate. Really I couldn't make some of these. Uh, that's yeah. one of the bad things about this show. There's just so much to see, so yeah. little time. Yeah. But I'm glad I got this before hours walk through, before the crowds start getting here. Uh, but yeah, let's do some music clips next. Yeah. Perfect timing. Yeah, you might as well grab me. Yes. Yeah. How are you doing? Good to see you. How you been? Jason, where have yes. you been? <laughs> everywhere. You. Everywhere, but nowhere. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I wanted to get uh, to hear the tape. You got another demonstration. Hi, Steve. You know Steve? Yeah. Everybody knows Steve. Volker is there with his tapes. Okay. You're selling tapes. There's tapes that are. These are the selections on the demo tape. Oh, really? Send me one of those two, please. You can have this one because I'm videoing it. Steve, are you going to the dark side too now? On the tapes, you're going to get into that side too? Well, it, it, for me, it's coming full circle. I been deep into it long ago and I'm uh, looping back around. So you got yellow and Hans these sync. This is really good. Oh yeah. That's a good comp and Monty Alexander was just playing it in uh Fredericksburg. That's it yeah. Analog audio design tape machines here in the States. And he just prepared for us a demonstration of kind of a sample tape, uh, yep. which uh, pieces uh, cut together. And those are going via our preamp directly into the power boxes and into the LX521 system. So if you are ready, we can start uh, playing the tape machine from analog audio design. Yeah. And the machine is, by the to... way, it's not a rebuilt anything. It's built from the ground up new. The product was a project was started by uh, Christoph Martinez uh, five years ago, and he brought uh, his talents from designing uh, uh, flight simulators and software into uh, new uh, devices that have never been used in tape recorders before. So it's a uh, it's a brand new machine from the ground up as far as production is concerned. It's been out now for over a year, uh, and so with that, is, uh, is this quarter inch four track? Cord? No, it's quarter inch half track. Half track. Right. Yeah. It's built on a professional basis. So sure. you compare this machine to the tech, uh, the uh, Telefunkens and the Studers of the world, <clears throat> and it's as they say, it's it's basically aimed at the high end consumer area because it is playback only. It's using the Studer. 318 head, which is uh, used on the A20, the A80, etc. But it's playback only. You'll have a record, reproduce machine probably later this summer. So let's listen to some music. The first cut is Monty Alexander. Recorded at uh, Montreux in 1974. It's very quiet. <laughs> yes. Did you push the right button? The, the meters on the moon? Yeah, I don't see the meters moving. No, no. Uh, uh, just this little crossing the switch here. Meters. and switch them, you know. I'm gonna sit here. The word should probably be said about the tape music. It, uh, these are tapes that are uh, <clears throat> made by Volker Long at Horkhaus in Germany. Uh, the, uh, he has the original masters and he makes a one-off copy of this so you'll notice the dynamic range and is incredible. Tape, yeah, no, I was going to ask that question, so I'm glad you yeah, brought that no, up. Yeah, because the, again, you can't, uh, a record has to be compressed because of the dynamic record right. situation, so you're going to hear the full uh, music presentation with, with tape. So that's what's wonderful about that. But he has, uh, uh, he has 
14 Studer A80Rs that he makes a one-to-one -one copy from, uh, from the master tape, which he has access to Deutsche Grammophon right. and Warner and uh, EMI and the like. So uh, that's why it's, a, it's, it's an incredible. So the next uh, cut, if you want I'm, I'm just curious um, what the, uh, the peak LEDs are calibrated for. Uh, I think plus uh, I think plus eight, and so these are being hit pretty hard. He uses nine. This is plus eight. Uses, that's nothing. Though. I know. Well, he uses <laughs> nine hundred tape from uh, BASF, yeah. which is the thickest, and so it has a, a lot of level on there. I would have to ask him. I don't really know where those are are clipping at in terms of that. But there's no distortion. It's just the, the nothing. Really, he's got nothing it. audible. These are five. He records at five twenty eight flux density. They're IEC. The wonderful thing about the machine too is it's all touch screen, so we can change those parameters yeah. just by touching it. Excellent. Okay. Well, and what's the price point? I'm gonna go check out of my room.